Today, we're gonna to look at the truth behind down payment assistance programs. Are they a scam or is it a great way to get into a home? I've been hearing more and more people say that down payment assistance programs are scams and you absolutely shouldn't use one to buy a house. So is there any truth to that? Let me walk you through the different types of down payment assistance programs and the pros and cons of using a down payment assistance program. Not all down payment assistance programs are created equal and some of them can be detrimental or scammy if you don't choose the right one or you don't know what to look for. So let's jump into it. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Ben Sun, welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. If this is your first time, welcome for the first time. We don't just talk about the disastrous downsides of DPA. We talk about improving our overall financial health through things like personal finance, investing, and real estate. So if that interests you and you wanna find out more ways to improve your financial position, you gotta hit that big red subscribe button. Let's first start by talking about the general requirements that you're gonna need in order to qualify for down payment assistance. As a general rule, you're gonna to need to be a first time home buyer. A first time home buyer is classified as someone who has not owned a home or been on title to a home in the last three years. So this means that you can't have been a co-signer or be a co-signer. You can't have inherited a home or have been gifted a home in the last three years. Now, what this does mean is that four years ago or three years ago, you could have bought and sold a home and you have been living with family or renting for that period of time, you would now be considered a first time home buyer and that would make you eligible for one of these programs. And the other major requirement is that you're gonna need at least a 620 credit score. And with some of these programs, you're gonna need at least a 640 credit score. And you have to have been buying the house as a primary residence, meaning a place that you're actually gonna reside in. It can't be a rental property or a second home or like a hunting cabin or something like that. It has to be a house that you're actually going to live in. And in the description down below, I'm gonna have two resources for you to be able to find down payment assistance in your area. These are gonna give you a more detailed look program to program. So you're gonna be able to go in there and see what general requirements that you're gonna need in order to qualify for these programs. You can also check out this video up here. That's gonna highlight these two programs or these two resources for you to walk you through how to get the best ones and how to find the ones in your area that meet your needs. All right, so real quick, before we get into the pros and cons, it's critical that we talk about the different types of down payment assistance programs. Again, like I said a minute ago, not all of these are created equal, and some of them can be extremely detrimental if you don't know what you're getting into. So the first type of program is called a grant program. These are generally gonna be provided to you by like your bank or uh, your city or local government, or a charity or a nonprofit working with your city or local government. These are programs that don't require you to pay the money back. These are literally free money programs. And yes, they're actually super common. They're one of the more common types of down payment assistance, but they don't require you to pay the money back. And there is a catch, and that is, generally these are directed towards lower income in minority groups. So you're gonna to have to meet specific requirements in order to be a part of this program. Generally speaking, you're gonna to have to make under a certain amount for the area that you live in, or be a part of one of these groups that are underrepresented in the area. But if you meet these requirements, it could be a great way for you to get into a house. Now, the second type of program is called a low interest loan. This is where they give you the money for the down payment, but they create a second loan on the back end. Again, lower interest than what your mortgage would be, but you have two monthly payments. These are a lot less common than the grants or the next two programs that we're gonna talk about because most people don't wanna sign up for two monthly payments. They'd rather just have it all fall down into one. But it's something that you're gonna have to be aware of because some of these programs, if you miss a monthly payment because you didn't know that you had a second monthly payment, they could require that you pay that money back in full. Now, the third type of down payment assistance, it's called a deferred loan. This, kind of like the second one, is still a loan, uh, and it's for the amount of the down payment and closing costs, but it's deferred until you sell the home, you refinance the home, or the 15, 20, or 30 year term is done. And so let's say if you go and sell your home, you're gonna have to pay back the down payment and closing costs at the time of closing. And the fourth type is called a forgivable loan. Again, it's a loan, but it's forgivable, meaning that if you meet specific program requirements, they're going to forgive the loan in full. Usually those are residency term uh, requirements, like you have to stay in the home for five years and make every monthly payment on time for that five year period, and they'll forgive the loan. All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes of the video. Let's start talking about the cons of using down payment assistance. I wanna save the positive, the happy side for the end of the video. So the first con is, 
it can take an already stressful mortgage process and make it longer and more complicated. Um, generally speaking, from the time that you apply for a mortgage, it takes about 20 to 30 days to close on the loan. Again, this is gonna depend on your own situation. Certain programs require an extra approval process. So after you spend the 30 days getting your loan reviewed by a lender, the lender then has to send it off to the down payment assistance company or have their underwriters review the down payment assistance after your loan's already approved. This can extend your loan process. It can also mean that you're required to provide additional information that you wouldn't otherwise be required to provide. Now, another major con, and we highlighted it just a second ago, is that you could have an extra monthly payment or you could be responsible for paying these programs back. If you have an extra monthly payment with an interest rate, this could mean that you're paying a lot more for your down payment than what you would if you just saved up the money and put it down yourself. And if you have to pay the down payment assistance back when you go to sell or refinance, it's due in full at the closing of the refinance or the sale. This could mean that if you don't have the equity in the home to cover that, you could be responsible for paying it out of pocket. So it could drastically delay your time frame for you to be able to sell or refinance your home because you have to take that into account. Into account. And keep in mind that it's down payment assistance and closing costs. So if you took 5% down payment assistance on a $300,000 house, that's $9,000. And if you have closing costs, that could be you know another five or 10,000. So you really wanna make sure that if you're signing up for one of these programs where the money is repayable, that you understand the full scope of what that means and when you have to repay it. Now, the third major con is kind of a two-parter. And the first part is, some of these programs require that you live in the home for a certain amount of time. Meaning if you wanna move before that time, all of that money is due again in full at the sale of the house. And some of these programs on top of having to stay in the house for five years, and this is where you start hearing more of the talk about it being a scam or not being worth it, is that some of these programs generally city funded require that you share the equity of the home once you sell it. So for instance, if your home went up in value like it would have over the last five or 10 years, you would have to share a percentage with the city or the group that you signed up to this contract with. You'd have to share a percentage of that increase uh, with them. And depending on the market, this could end up costing you way more than the three or 5% down that would have normally been required to uh, put down to buy the home. And the final con is just like with seemingly every other industry now, there are scams galore. Most of these are going to be websites that are advertising themselves as DPA websites. So they're going to have you go in and like input your info, like your social security number, date of birth, and then they just steal it. Um, most of these should be fairly easy to ferret out because they're gonna have spelling mistakes so they're not gonna be official like government or bank or lender websites giving you information. Now there are others that are more advanced where they say that they'll help you line up your down payment assistance before you talk to a lender. They do this to get all of your personal info and potentially have you pay them money. Yes, it actually happens but they want to do this before you talk to a lender because they know that a bank or a lender is going to be able to ferret this out because we see it more often. So a good thing to keep in mind here is that down payment assistance programs shouldn't be lined up excluding your lender. Your lender has to be tied into it and they should know where your money is coming from ahead of time. So you should be talking to your lender and telling them what your plans for your funds are and they can help you register or sign up for the down payment assistance programs. So that means that none of your personal info should be given on these websites ahead of time. If they're asking for your social security number, your date of birth, anything like that outside of your lender, then you should not do it. You should exit the, the website immediately. It's probably not a legit website. They don't generally need that info to be able to tell you if you qualify ahead of time. Again, there's resources that I trust down in the description below. I don't have any ownership or any affiliation with them. They're not paying me to say it, uh, but these are websites that I've used, my company uses, uh, to determine down payment assistance in your area. They ask you for your email, and then they ask you for like general household and income, uh, uh, not requirements, but general like household size and like approximately how much you make, but it's not tied to your name or any of your personal info. And then it pulls a list of the down payment assistance programs that are in your area and that you might qualify for 
based off of basic information and then you match it up with your lender who can help you apply for these programs using like back channel trusted sources. All right, enough talk about getting scammed and potentially having all your money and your identity stolen. Let's end the video on a more positive note. And that's let's talk about the pros of using down payment assistance. Down payment assistance can be a truly great way to get into a house. The first pro is that it can make your home more affordable. A common misconception is that you can't couple a down payment assistance with your own money or you won't qualify for down payment assistance if you have money. That's not true at all. You can actually combine the two. So for instance, if you have a 15% down payment, you can combine that with a 5% down down payment assistance, and that's how you get your 20% down, which a lot of people think you need. That's also not true. You only need a 3% down payment on a conventional mortgage, but we'll talk about that in a different video. And so you could combine the two, and for obvious reasons, that's gonna lower your monthly payment because you're gonna be borrowing less money, but it's also gonna help you remove or reduce your private mortgage insurance, which is just a charge for not having 20% down. And it could also lower your interest rate because the loan is seen as less risky because you have more of a down payment. Now on the flip side, you could put less money down, only use your down payment assistance and keep more money in your pocket. And since right now homes are more expensive and inflation is causing other things to be more expensive like credit card interest rates and car loans and things like that, it might be worth it to put less money down, keep the money in your pocket, or pay off the higher interest, uh, like credit cards or car loans or something like that, or use the money as a safety net should you get in trouble or lose your job or something like that. And DPA can help you get into a home much sooner. On a $300,000 house, a 3% down payment is gonna be about $9,000. And for some of us, that can take months or even years to save up. And I know there's speculation on what the housing market's gonna do, but, Traditionally speaking, homes have gone up in value over time. And the longer that you wait, the more expensive it gets. It can be detrimental and create a situation where you've lost out on the time to build equity. Think of in the last 10 years, if you were old enough to have bought 10 years ago, think of what the home values have done. And if you owned that home, how much equity you would have in that home. The longer that you wait, the more expensive it's gonna be. If done correctly or responsibly, meaning using the down payment assistance resources, using grants to get the free money rather than extra loans that you have to pay back. You can use the down payment assistance program to help you get into the home a lot sooner and to start building equity. Building equity in a home is one of the best ways to stabilize your monthly payments and to start building wealth. Most millionaires in this country are millionaires because they have equity in their home and they've been consistently investing in their 401ks over the course of their careers. Is there anything I missed? Comment down below if you have any questions about down payment assistance programs or what it takes to qualify. And if you got value out of this video, guys, you gotta hit that big red subscribe button and we'll see you on the next one.